All right, so this is the zippers talk that I've been promising for a long ass time. Okay. Um, so about me, I've been a Haskell developer in my free time for like four years. Uh, in my professional life, I'm a software consultant um, for you know a small consulting firm around the DC area. Uh, so the only background I'm actually expecting you guys to have for this talk is that you understand Haskell syntax, you're comfortable <laughs> with. <laughs> you can explain. Yes, please, because I don't really quite understand all of the subtleties of the layout rule. Okay. I gotta admit, I'm very concerned okay. about that. Um, <laughs> I don't think it's gonna come into play here. <laughs> you're comfortable with higher order functions because we're gonna be passing some functions around and, and yeah. And the last thing is that you're you're familiar with the concept of a functor and you understand how FMAP is supposed to work in theory. So the basic outline for this talk is we're going to talk about traversals first because zippers um, kind of build on traversals. Uh, this will be important for anyone who wants to pick up lens because traversals show up there quite a bit. Um, once we understand what traversals are, we'll talk about how to freeze them and produce zippers. I'll go through some examples of what some zipper libraries look like. We'll talk about what you use zippers for. And then we'll start talking about some um, you know, more complicated topics about how to extend the concept for more uh, features. Um, those last three things, I'm happy to skip any of them if we don't want to get there, um, depending on time. The big thing, though, is um, I have a break planned after we get to the use cases. So. Uh, Feel free to stop me and ask questions at any point. So traversals. Traversals are a pass through some data structure. Uh, they're kind of like, they're very similar to the concept of um, iteration from you know, imperative languages. Uh, basically, we want to go from, in some order through a data structure. I'm going to be saying from left to right, though any order you specify will technically work. Uh, I'm saying left to right because it makes it easier to draw on the whiteboard when I get up there to draw. Uh, and I think most of the literature calls it left to right as well. And for each uh, element you come to inside the data structure, you want to perform an operation to that element, right? And so this is like, you know, your for each loops and whatnot in imperative languages, but generally this is some complicated traversal through some complicated data structure. So some intuitions you need to have. Uh, yeah. So we're going to visit each element once and only once, right? We're going to preserve the structure of the data structure, and we want to do the right thing, meaning you know naturality. We want to preserve an identity and a few other properties like that. Um, we want it to be associative, and, and there's a few other properties. I'm not going to list them off because drawing it all out is going to be is going to take some time. So you already know one function that behaves like a traversal, and that's FMAP. Um, its type, you know, shows this basic structure in and of itself because if you have a functor, oh, I left the functor uh, clause off, but if you have a functor and you pass it, a, you call FMAP on it, you're going to get a function from FA to FB that preserves the structure and it performs an operation to each element one time. So we can extend that concept to create a traversable class, and this just got added to base in uh, JC 7.10. Um, ignore the foldable constraint for now, because I'm not going to get into it, but essentially a traversable T is a type that is a functor and has this fancy traverse function on it. The traverse function looks a lot like FMAP, except instead of a functor, we want an applicative. And the extra constraint we add is that, uh, in this case, we're going to be looking at FB as the output of the action. So we take, we, we perform an action, we get out a some FB in a context, uh, we apply it over some traversable container, and we get out a, you know, an action within the applicative that contains the uh, the whole uh, computed structure. So if we set the applicative f to the identity functor, uh, you can pretty easily see that this is equivalent to fmap. If you can't see it, stop me now because I can walk you through how that, what that looks like and why that's the case. Anyone want me to stop here? Okay. Um, there's a quick lens aside here just because uh, I figured it's good to point it out. 
Uh, a traversal is related to traversable. It's any function with the same type as traverse and has to satisfy the same loss. So now we can you know, start talking about zippers. The first thing we need to do is take a traversal and freeze it. Um, the reason we want to do this is because when you take a traversal, the only thing you can do is apply that one action all the way through. You don't get to muck with the order in which you go through the structure. You don't get to muck with um, going back and repeating. You can only visit each element once, whereas with these actions we have, we might want to go uh, visit, each ele visit an element multiple times through a pass through a data structure. For example, if you're doing interactive editing. Can you give like an example of, of uh, just like using a traverse with a, where f isn't identity? Yeah. Like what you might do? Like what's another f you might have? You could have something that... Uh, that very quickly gets into the lens examples that I was going to avoid. You, you, but you, uh, you're, you're talking about that's, that's not... Well, just anything that doesn't reduce the F-map. Oh, yeah, well, that... Yeah, so you can do it with I.O., for example. Sure. Um, I'll pull up GCI. So if we do uh, import control, I'll do... It's, it, this function actually comes from foldable. Oops. Um, so if we do four... One, two, three, four, over print. It prints out the elements. The type of four, ignore the foldable constraint, it equivalently could be traversable for this function. So what about when you have an applicative but not a monad? Um, like const? I think we'd have to define it. it's not. Well, I'm just wondering when this is useful for something that's applicative but not a monad. Um, well, you can. No, well, I, I think you could probably. Oh no, that's a monad. Sorry. Because I was I was pretty confused. Like in a type signature, like like what is an applicative doing? It's for you? applicative but because that is the that is the smallest constraint you need to write traversable. That is the that is the least of a constraint you need to to to, to write the function. Um, and but it, if you have an applicative. Can you do anything interesting without it being a monad? Yeah, that's actually how um, like getters and setters are well, getters are implemented in Lens is by uh, uh, using the fact that it's an applicative and exactly an applicative. So, so getters and setters are getters, not setters. Setters use the fact that getters are applicatives. Yeah. Okay. Identity versus const. So do. Do we have like a concrete example of what it would be? Like, let's say using, uh, like applying a getter over some foldable thing, like traversing with a, uh, a getter. I mean, let me know if I'm bringing you off on a tangent. It's a little bit of a tangent, but it's not a bad question. Uh, so with that, oh, I'd have to implement all of the applicative. Shoot. Why don't you import uh, uh, data .functor dot That's what I can constant. remember. Um, what is it? Data dot functor dot what? Constant, I think, and then it's called constant. So now, if we run over. I mean, if you're, if you're limiting yourself to foldable, that, that seems, what's that, you know? It's limiting itself to foldable because you can happen, you happen to be able to write four with just a foldable constraint. The four underscore. The full four that actually builds back the traverse right. structure requires the traversable constraint. Right. Um, I'm not actually sure how to show you an example of this. So all the usual examples are going ads. <laughs> the ones you're probably going to use, yeah. Uh, it is used though, the the applicative. Okay, just and and right. So the reason I was asking that is just because everything I can po possibly think of, like traverse, is is something where there's some state like thing going on, and and I was trying to understand if there's. Well, you just saw with I/O, where the functor becomes I/O. Um, 
you can also get the funk derby maybe and a right. bunch of other things, not just state. Um, but if it turns out the constant is then useful, then it's useful. What happens if it's zipless? That's just a, my go-to example of what is an applicative that's not a monad. You end up. So what it's using what the what it's, it's using the applicative constraint for is to smash the generate. So if you apply this function right a to fb to each element in ta, sure. you're going to get a, a bunch of t of fbs, and then you have to fold over the ta, right, to get out the. What I mean is to get out the f of tb. Suppose and so that that's where your f is zip list. Yes. Yeah. So it'll end up zipping all the lists, that, all the zip lists you generate together. Because right. you'll generate one zip list for each of these actions, and then it will zip them all together with the applicative. Um, right. Joint. So there is an example of something that you could do if you wanted to. Whether okay. it's useful or not is another question, but you could do it. It would. It's it useful with be const useful. because then you you go over this data structure, you get a bunch of constant values, and then you just ignore all but the first one that you wanted. And you pull one thing out of the structure. I don't really quite understand that yet, but that's for another time. Yeah, that's a different talk. All right, uh, but these are the two um, interesting functions you get out of traversable, uh, for and the for underscore. And the reason they're interesting is because there's a very easy analog for these functions in um, imperative languages. Uh, for underscore is almost exactly a for each loop. And so I'm going to use the for each loop example to talk about what happens as we traverse through a data structure. Uh, so in a for each loop, in for example Java, and I've got the example at the bottom, pretend this was legal Java for right now, even though you can't get a list <laughs> like that, and I didn't want to fill the page generating a list. Um, <laughs> we'd be very happy if that were legal Java. <laughs> so, for each part of a for each loop, and each iteration, it's going to pull out one element. Uh, we're going to process it with the body of the for each loop, and then we add it to the structure and process. And this is exactly what the for underscore function ends up doing when you pass, you know, one, two, three, four to print. It goes through and it does. It prints one, then two, then three, then four, and it generates a structure of. Right. Uh, it generates a structure of uh, like a list of uh, units and then folds that up and generates a unit for the whole thing. So as you're doing this, during iteration, we get we pull out the one, we print the one, and we cons the unit onto the empty list. Then we get the two, we print the two, we cons the unit onto the um, list we generated. And this is what happens at each step. We can freeze this down now, right? And this is where I want to start drawing on the whiteboard. Um, do you think anyone cares about erasing stuff? Uh, probably not, but this thing got erased. <laughs> That's a shared space. Yeah, I don't so. think it matters. So what we end up getting is that we have this list over here. We have two, three, four. We're passing the one that was constant on the front through. We're doing print to it, and what we get out of this side is. Right? Sure. And so on the left, we have these processed elements after the iteration is finished. On the right, we have the elements that are still in, in process of being processed. And what we're looking at in the middle is the one. And so that's where Connor McBride's joke comes from, which is that it's clowns to the left, jokers to the right, and we're stuck in the middle. So the important thing here is that we are actually stuck in the middle, right? The one thing we can look at at each step is the element in the middle. And we have this we have this unknown thing to the left, which is already processed data. We have this unknown thing to the right, which is data that has, that's yet to be processed. And what we're focused on is the element we're actually staring at. And if we capture this in a data structure, we have now frozen the traversal. And we can continue the traversal by, you know, creating some basic operations to go forward and backwards inside of this. So what do we need to actually come up with a zipper interface? Uh, for some traversable T, which I left off the traversable constraints on these, but you don't actually, I don't think any of the libraries 
except the lens zipper interface actually provides that. Um, I might be wrong about that. In any case, for a given TA um, structure, uh, we need a couple of functions that are kind of important. First, we need a way to create a zipper from the traversable structure. Oh god, stop that. Uh, we need a way to read the focus out. We probably want a way to replace the focus with some other element. We need a way to go left, so we to um, basically move already processed data back into. So if we want, if we wanted to go back this way to the, like um, pull an element off the front of this list and put it back into focus, uh, we need a way to do that. We need a way to go right, which is to process the next right element. And we might want an insert and delete function to stick something into the focus or remove it. What's What's set focus again? Oh, that's modifying the thing in yeah. the middle. Yeah. Okay. Replace whatever's in the middle with, and so you could also have a modified focus that would be just equivalent. But the set focus move you in move you to different. No. Or? No. So if we have like for example, I'll talk about this in a second. But if we have uh, a zipper that looks like uh, one, and on this side we have two, three, four, right? This would be a list zipper, and this would be the focus. And if we set the two to five, all that would happen is. And that was gonna be the next set of examples. Okay. <laughs> so there is a list zipper package on Hackage, which is really fun to say out loud. Um, and I was just gonna go through how it ends up implementing most of that interface. Um, that is the first example. When I look up zippers on Wikipedia and yeah. other things, it seems to always describe them as a tree type thing. You can like get a zipper for child. a tree, you can get a zipper for um, okay. lists, you can get a zipper for any traversable structure. Okay. Yeah. I'll do trees next. Oh, okay. Cool. I, but, but I'm, uh, maybe there's just a little side thing, but over there, yeah, it doesn't really look like a zipper because the things on the left and things on the right have different types. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you were right. to try to go backwards, right. how do you reach you wouldn't be you wouldn't be able to, right? Mm -hmm. In this case we have we have to restrict the types so such that these are that the types over here, the types over here end up being the same and the the action that happens in the middle can't change the type. That's what we lose when we convert from the traversal to the zipper. That makes sense? Yeah. Unless, of course, you keep track of what the, where it came from. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> so I think I already have it pulled up. The list zipper package uh, provides a bunch of functions, uh, but the basic zipper type is just this, you know, these two lists like I was showing up there. Uh, the first element of this second list is going to be the, um, like the current, like focused element. And this list is actually backwards because elements are gonna always be constant on the front of it. So it's gonna be the reverse of whatever, like it, it'll be processed in reverse order. So the first element that was processed will be at the end of that, of that list. So this is a stack, and this would be more of a key. Um, so we can go from zippers to, um, or sorry, from a list to a zipper with the from list function. We can, there is a left function summary at left and right that goes zipper A to zipper A and move the focus. And they ha also has an insert and delete. Uh, I'll import the package. Uh, I noticed in that particular module it supports oh. an empty zipper. Is that typical for a zipper? Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's just zipper, zipper of an empty list, I think that was. Okay. 
I, just, I always thought of a zipper as necessarily having a focus, but if it's an empty list, then it doesn't have a focus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get that's the handling failure part of the talk. Okay. Yeah. I'm ignoring that because it adds extra stuff to type signature. And for example, this package doesn't even try to handle it. So we can start with an empty list and get out a zipper, which would, which would be the equivalent of you know, this, right? Uh, so if we start it empty and we insert into it, uh, I believe insert is on the first. Yeah. So if we insert one into empty, we get a A list with just the element one in it, uh, and we can do that for a few things. If we take one, two, three, four, right, and we turn this into a zipper, uh, that's from list. We'll get out a zipper, and from here we can get the focus, which was called cursor. and we see that we have the cursor pointing at one. If we start from this and we first uh, go left. Actually, I'm not gonna go left because that will just show a failure. We can see that we've moved the focus around. If we instead insert um, five at that position, and then get the cursor back out, we get out to five. So, see, what's the right it? doing in that case? Is it it's moving the, the cursor to the right, to the right so of the list. So it's putting the five in front, front of the two? Of the two yeah. Okay. Uh, actually, we can see that if we... <laughs> it, it'll replace <laughs> the one, yeah. right? No. It replaces oh, just the two. Because he went right. I don't think it oh. replaces it. Oh, not. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so it's 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 that's cool. Works. Okay. Yeah. If we instead do, what's the name of the function here? Replace. Okay. So this is an efficient, immutable yeah. structure. Okay, I, I think I understand the general concept now. Okay. <laughs> I was a little lost there, though. The, the sad <laughs> thing is that as far as I know, once you, if you go to two dimensions, you can't be efficient at <laughs> like if you want to like do a tree, or grids grid. don't seem to work as far as I know. For what? I don't think you can make a zipper for a grid that will get you... Oh, so you can go up, down, up, down left, right. and right, all of them efficient. I think you end up... You sort of can, right? Depends on how you, you store go, the grid, probably. It you depends on how you store the grid, and it depends you on... You can do something so that you can have a distinguished line in one direction that's good, Right. And going to and from that line is good, but if you're trying to go diagonal, if you're trying to go, well, no, if you're just trying to go, not on that distinguished line. If you're, if the distinguished line is here and you're trying to get from here to here, then you gotta go like that. <laughs> well, are you trying to add like rows to this grid? Just to tr to to travel around. So the grid. traveling around doesn't seem like it should be a problem. The problem is. is I think it is. Because you have to you're gonna be either row major or column major. Okay. And if you need to go what he's saying is if you have to go It's like if you had to surround yourself with linked lists. Yeah. <laughs> how, would you, how would you do it? Well why can't it be backed by so not linked matrix lists. or something? If, if we're in this is going to come up later. Because then, the then if you change one element of the matrix, you have to like copy the whole thing. If we're looking at the rows, right, we'll be looking at this whole row at once. And if we want to end up, um, let's say, what was your example? We were focused if on. You're, if you're trying um, to go from the zero in the, uh, well, I mean, 
It had to be yeah, bigger than this. I, I, the I upper left zero your, to the upper right like your, zero. What your arrangement is. So let's say we were doing it in column major, right? We were focused this I way. I don't know what that means, but okay. Uh, oh, so so, so now we can. We're trying to, so. So now we'd be able to go down to two easily. We'd be able to uh, move the whole focus down to this side, right? We can we can right. Move but if focus. you're trying to go from the rightmost zero yeah. to the rightmost two. Then suddenly you have a problem, or the or the rightmost right. zero to the rightmost one, you're you're going to have a bit of a of an issue. With so this the, one right here. Yeah, because you have to go all the way. You have to go all the way that way, and then down, and then all the way back. No, because you can move this this way first. I think it only becomes a problem when you try to change things, not when. You and then you can go down. It depends on the implementation. Well, we're saying that everything's immutable, so like. Okay. So it's, I'm imagining this whole thing is linked lists of linked lists or something like that. I'm sure there's a better structure than that. There is a better structure than that. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is you're, you're, you're so, I'm sorry. You're well, at this we've level, had zippers for lists, be, right? So you can have be, zippers, oh, zippers. This will make more sense once lists. I get to this okay. part. Uh, well, I'll, I have a whole section okay. of stuff to get into this. So. There's some issue, I don't remember what the yeah. details. Then you could store it in trees where each level of the tree is like linked up to the next row in several <laughs> connections. <laughs> that probably wouldn't work. So one of the things I want to do with you guys is walk through how this library is actually implemented so you get a little bit of a feel for how these things actually work. Um, let's go into main and try and create the zipper type. We know that zipper looks like zipper A is we're still talking about list zippers here? List zippers, yeah. It's the simplest kind of zipper. So let's stick to it for right now, and we're going to talk about trees next. So we know it looks like two lists, right? So get focus, we know it needs to have the type zipper of A to A. Uh, and how is get focus going to have to be implemented? Head bees. Hmm? Head bees? Yeah. <laughs> Why not just? Well, because you have bees there. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it had to stay that way. <laughs> sure, now you're cheating. <laughs> uh, let me make sure I have the slides up so I can see the functions that were crucial. All right. And GHC will complain about your incomplete pattern match. Oh, it'll complain, yeah. <laughs> Uh, if we wanted to set the focus, this is going to be the same, right? Uh, a to zipper A. To zipper A. And everyone can see how it's implemented, right? Jeff, you've been kind of quiet. Are you following okay? Um, I think so. Okay. <laughs> Your double colons show up as colons? Yeah. Special colons and you circling colons? colons. <laughs> yeah. What the heck? Uh, yeah. How do you do that? <laughs> uh, that's a Vim feature. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's one of many plugins doing it. It's probably multiple plugins doing it at the same time. <laughs> I make my tabs into pipes in, in uh, one of my programming languages. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Like I also have like Lambda set up to. Turn into a lambda yeah. and stuff like that. And if you notice, the arrows are sort of mm -hmm. actual arrows instead of. Yeah. Yep. Make sure when you save the file, it puts it back. <laughs> Don't worry. Soon you're going to be into the Agda world of, of symbols <laughs> that you can't even name. No, no, when you, when you edit these things, they go back into their regular company. But I'll uh, tell you that however crazy. I still edit this. However crazy with my keyboard. symbols are. <laughs> Acta does have some nice points. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> like it's, I, 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 I don't actually know the language yet, but just reading it, I can tell it has a proper module system. <laughs> it's like the holy grail. So every language is like, it's a great language, it just doesn't have a proper module system. <laughs> <laughs> is this, uh, we'll start into that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so how are we gonna, you know, write left? Uh, I think I'm calling go left in the talk, so I'll keep calling go left. All 
All right, how am I going left? Pattern match on A's. <laughs> that would be necessary because of the way they'll bind. Uh, right should be similar, right? Yep. Actually, I'm just going to copy paste because. Mm. Okay. I don't want to rewrite all that up. <laughs> I think it's almost a complete rewrite, but um, <laughs> is it? Whatever floats your boat. Because how they do this you know, keystroke is going to the left to the left. You forgot the uh, go left at the beginning. Well, <laughs> <laughs> fine. Copy pasta error. <laughs> Pretty typical. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Insert. Yeah. Okay. Did you already write it for set focus. Insert. No. No. Okay. I thought because you popped the A on. Whoa. Oh yeah, Whoa. yeah, yeah. You're right. Set focus. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, should, this is wrong. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, cop oh, I'll copy that first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 there we go. <laughs> I should probably just rename these two lines. <laughs> yeah, you should just go back and change set focus to insert. <laughs> replace all set focus with insert. And then <laughs> no one caught it. Thought you guys were paying attention. I, I only realized what was happening on go left. That was when my. Uh, <laughs> Realization happened. You might want some parentheses. <laughs> that can really do. It's really annoying. Man, Man we're really not making this easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's always fun when, when Idris's case split forgets to put in the parentheses, and so. <laughs> <laughs> and then you gotta go and, and, and you get some horrible paper, and you realize, oh, okay, well. Or it all put some subscripts after the parentheses or something. That's really bad when like the programming language itself is feeding you wrong information. <laughs> Why does it forget to put the parentheses in? Because it's it's entirely string based, the case splitting thing. Okay. Why, what they were thinking, I really don't know. <laughs> but it's not going from an AST, it's just doing stuff to the strings and it just doesn't always work. Okay. <laughs> All right. You think so I would need to ask questions. a newbie question? Yeah. Yep. What happens when I go left one too far? <laughs> Boom. Boom. Try Is it. that a runtime error? Yes. It's a runtime error. Right. Um, and JNC will complain about that runtime error before it happens, but it'll let you run. The it'll game. complain at compile time that he didn't yeah. handle all the cases. Right. In which case, the only way to handle it anyway would be to throw a runtime error because you can't right. catch that at compile time because you're not keeping track of the size of the list of the times. Right. right. Yep. Okay. Which is why zippers make more sense for non-empty list, uh, the non-empty list type, which is in the semi-groups package. Well, no, you can endow, endow this with, with the error handling you need, and oh, okay. there's two extra functions, which I'll add later, that'll cover that. Uh, oh, we still need delete. All right, who wants to write the leaf for me? Uh, just backwards of insert. <laughs> Copy insert. <laughs> Take the right hand side and put it on the left hand side. And then the left hand it's side. Not actually, the right hand side. It's not actually related to insert. And you don't want the A there. Oh, uh, whoops. <laughs> no, I was. <laughs> except for that A, which you already put in there. I was right. You just flipped the sides. No, it's delete. You What's it going to look like? Right, you got to flip the sides. Yeah, you just flip the sides and insert. B, B, S, and the uh, parameters. Right? You take that and you pattern match that there, and then you put that over there. 
Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. <laughs> To say valuable keystrokes by doing it the way I suggested. <laughs> I'm, I'm clearly trying to save keystrokes here. Those keyboards are only good for so many things. <laughs> True story. I'm an Emacs user, and I uh, not only wore the like little uh, black plastic coating off of my Alt key, but also my X key popped up. I had to take it to the Apple Store and give me a new key. <laughs> Too many meta X's. That's why is better. <laughs> Colon probably gets worn out though. And then escape. All right. So the other escape. You don't take control C. <laughs> yeah. Well, escape on changes the, modes. On the on the, on the Dvorak keyboard, if you set your control key to where it belongs, which is where it's usually marked caps lock, then control C is left pinky, middle finger, right hand, and it's really very quick. Compared to the escape key, which is Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of Except Vim users put escape too. on the caps lock. Yeah. That's not where it belongs. That's exactly where it belongs. No, they, they just use caps lock exactly instead of escape. Control. It's not like where it belongs. It's just like <laughs> easier to hit than but the escape key. That's the control key. key. Okay. <laughs> if you use Emacs, sure. <laughs> <laughs> if you're using Vim, who needs it? Oh, I should probably show you guys what I'm looking at. That would probably help. So there's also the Rose Zipper package. The Rose Zipper package uh, provides a zipper for Data Tree. Uh, data Tree is actually we should probably draw this out before we even start talking about it. The Rose Tree, yeah. Yeah, it is a Rose Tree. Rose Tree. Sounds cool. It sounds like something I knew what it was once upon a time. It's pretty boring. It's just labeled <laughs> trees. Okay. Labeled. How, how are they immutable or whatever? The, are they? Go ahead and draw it. Down. When you say labeled, you mean labeled in the sense of a red black tree? To no. No, I think it's like it's like a tree of trees, right? Tree of <laughs> red. <laughs> There's only like one sentence in the Wikipedia article. It says. That's a boring. The name, name was coined. Because it evokes similar names. Oh, yeah, it's instead of have, like a binary name, tree, it's a list. Yeah. Yeah. So you can have all the okay. so you can have <laughs> arbitrarily many <laughs> branches. Yeah. I'm just drawing as a binary it's tree because. Arbitrary and a tree. Yep. Okay, yeah. got it. Any node can have an arbitrary tree. Oh, okay, okay. that's why it's not red yeah. black. Okay, yes. Got it. Okay. Well, it's also not red black because it doesn't meet the red black properties and doesn't do balancing or it's not there. I just think that's why they don't have the trees. That it's not binary. Not necessarily. Can you have a. Is there. Yeah, that's true. I don't <laughs> no, I was thinking, like, does binary. Binary, red, black make yeah. Some people just call that binary? a tree, and then a binary no, tree no, is the. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So rose trees are just yeah. trees. Really generic trees. Do you have a little tree? What's up? That example happens to you. <laughs> yes. I'm just drawing it that way because it makes it easier. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> so there's a couple of different ways we can traverse this, this tree, right? Um, sure. Anyone remember what they are? Yes. Postfix, infix, and prefix. And? Uh, Breath first, step first. Uh, level order. Right? Oh, oh yeah. Level order, right. Okay. Which is breath first? first? That's breath first, right? I mean, you can do like, you know, pretty much any way you want, go. right? Yeah, breath yeah, first, first, first is level. Oh, yeah. yeah. See. Right. You could also do it, you can do it from the bottom to the top if you really wanted to. Oh, yes. <laughs> But I don't think you do. Yeah, you could. I mean, you could. You could do it by asking the order anyway. of the actual new values as well. Theoretically. <laughs> <laughs> so which traversals we want to <laughs> arbitrary number of ways to traverse as ever for? Oh, okay. That would be a sort of. Why don't we do like uh, <laughs> in order? Yeah. Or that, that, in order sounds fun. Wait, let's start with a level order. Level order. Just because it's harder. No, it's actually <laughs> in this case it's easier. Really? Or it's easier than in order? In order is in, always. Oh, really? Level yeah. order is just right. the A, B, C, D. Because of how the rose tree is implemented, right? This oh. is a list of nodes here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, this has a, a list of children, right? And each mm -hmm. each level has a list of children. So mm -hmm. it's just, you just concatenate the children together to get the level order mm -hmm. traversal. Mm -hmm. Wait, how is it implemented? In order is even easier. The list. So you have a node. 
which has a label, right? And then it has a list of notes. Okay. And those are the children? These are the children. Okay. So when you when you visit a node, you have the label available to you, so you can pull that out and that's your data element. Or you can go to the children and you have the, the full list of children right there. So if this, you know, each of these is gonna have a list of children as well, and this list is, you know, the, the full list of like two levels down just gonna be a concatenation of all the mm, the children, the children's children. Right? We just take all those lists inside of here. Mm. All right. But I wanted this picture up so we can we can talk about what's supposed to happen. So so is it immutable with structural sharing or anything like that? This Depends on how you implement it. But. Oh, okay. Yeah. But in this context, yes. Yes. It's almost certainly going to be just fine. Well, it just didn't. I thought you were explaining how it was implemented and it didn't seem like it was immutable. But, uh, no, it's, it's immutable. Okay. It, cool. Every time you make, like, if you notice, like, even with the zip thing here, this is also immutable. Because each time I'm returning a value here, I'm actually constructing a whole new data structure based on the input. Okay. So each time I'm not I'm not modifying this this value that I'm being passed in, I'm constructing a whole new value. Yeah, things are always going to be immutable in Haskell unless you explicitly go out of your way to make it not immutable. So this is what we want to we want a zipper for, right? Mm. Mm. So what is tree zipper gonna have to look like for this to work? Wait, so are we we're zipping rows trees or is it being binary trees? Rows trees. Yeah. Okay. Import data dot tree. Because I think you want the list zipper for, for each level. As you go through the nodes. And then you have a list of the whatever, however it works, a list of the parents or some whatever. No, we're not going to do that. Um, the reason being, we are going to treat this whole thing as one traversal. So we're going to visit A, then B, then C, um, then D, then E, then F, then G. So it just goes to forward, like forward so and back or something? Yeah, it'll just go forward and back. Okay. There's a, there's a fixed order to this, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Oh. That's why I wrote it out this way. So it's not, a, it's not a zipper that's based on the structure of the tree, it's a exactly. different kind of zipper or something. Well, no, it's, a, it's based on the structure of the tree, but it's a level order traversal that's producing it. Right? This is one traversal through the tree. We're not doing something where we traverse this level, then descend to this level, and go back up and, and like that. Like do we follow on it? What? Or you could do like, because I think like the one with the, on like the intro examples is like you could do like any traversal you want. Yeah, any, any, any traversal yeah, you want. Yeah. yeah, but this one is like restricts you to one. Well, we're okay. just implementing one yeah, example. Okay. We could also do the in order one if you want. Okay. Would in order seems like it's kind of a different notion of zipper, or maybe I'm just. Would in order, oh, I was just asking if in order would be easier. Uh, we'd have no. to come up with the in order traversal. We'd have to get all the way down to D, right? And then B, then E, then A, okay. then F, then C, then G, right? We'd, we'd be bouncing all the time. It's more complicated when there's not a binary tree also if it has three yeah. children. Right. Oh, oh because right. this is rose tree. There is no in order traversal, really. Well, I mean, no, you could it's also not children. Yeah, let's write children, right. <laughs> yeah, <that's very> children. <laughs> right. Sorry? Well, oh, oh, no, right. Pre, pre order. It's, it's still weird, though. Yeah. Pre order is the one that makes. Right. Yeah, we could do pre order, but then. That goes A, B, D, E. Yeah, there's no C. order. Yeah. Okay. 
Wouldn't pre-order be easy? <laughs> that's, that, that's what I was thinking. Well, level order, you can just get the child list of trees, right? And then There's one really yeah. simple way to do this, right? Because it's a rose tree. We could just walk the whole tree, pull out the full out, like, traversed list, and then just give out a list zipper, right? Yeah. That's one way to you do it. You don't have to be able to go back to the tree. And then you write the function that goes back to the tree, which takes the list and generates the tree. It's not efficient, but that's one easy way How to do it. How would you do that, though? You have to what? preserve some information about about the tree structure. Yeah, because yeah. it's, it's not a binary tree, so it's not sorted necessarily. Right. What happens if you insert things into the list? Right. I'm just <laughs> throwing out an idea to start. So that's that's one way we could do it. What's a what's a better way? We're, we're, we're still trying to do this level order. Can do. I'm saying level order is easiest just because okay. we can get A then B and C as the first set of children, right. and then reach for D, E, F, and G as the next set of children. I right. like having, like, a, a there should be a pre-tree, and there a post-tree, and, and then this tree. <laughs> <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> hold on, hold on one second. Let's, let's think about it. Like, if I'm at think B... About what it, think about what this is going to look like, right? If I'm at B, then I have my... Um, so let's say we're just looking at this B, D, E tree right here. Right? So it's just quicker to draw. So at first I have B, D, E, right? And then I pop B off, right? And I have D and E over here, and I'm focused on B. I do something to B, and I insert it into the tree over here, right? Then I say, okay, my next element is going to be D. Oh, you're building another tree on the left. I get it. And I know it's the child. Right? And then I do the same thing with E. How do you know where to put E? Yeah, how next do you child. know when the child starts? You're pulling the children the off in order, so you just pop the children on the, in order here. Yeah, but you. But how do you know that E wasn't a child of D? How do you know which clown is the parent? Well, it's the same. It's the same. The same you're level. going through the whole level at a time, remember? But, but you have to look at only one element at a time, right? Yeah, but when you look at an element, you're going to get its whole set of children as well. Well, we can look at the bigger example next. You want to try in order, or uh, well, how would you do the bigger one? Just, just see. This is also just an idea. Okay. I'm not saying this is the way you should do it. I'm just throwing out another idea for how this might work. So if we look at A, B, C, D, E. G, right? So we pop A off and put it over here. So now we have two subtrees. Right? Oh, okay. So we were kind of looking at a list of this kind of forest. Okay. Forest, yeah. So the, what's on the left is kind of the top of the tree, and what's on the right is is the bottom of the tree. Yeah, wouldn't the right just be the current node you're on, and then the left would be the a list of each of the parents' nodes? The, the right has to be a forest, though, because of this situation when you... All right, so look, well, what happens when you continue on here? Yeah, what happens so when you grab B, B, B and C? Okay, so next we grab B. Oh, I see what you're saying. Right? And so we end up with this situation. Right? So we've got two, we pop, we put the two children on. Okay. B's over here, then it comes off, and we know that it has to be A's child. So we have to stick it under A. We stick it under A. All right. Now then we pull C off. How do you know to pull C off and not D and E? Because you have D to put D and E at the end. Well, you work in the, the same level. The tree is at the... You always work through the whole level, right? It's a level order. So we know that C has to be the next element. Right. But we do run into a problem now. Yeah, now it gets... Unless we track the each level separately, right? 
So if we know that we hit the end of this one, then we grab the next list of children. And then how do you know? But then how do you how know, know, you know to where the which D and E where the children of B? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. You don't. <laughs> so that's where we run into a problem. Is now, and we get from when we get from E to F, we don't know where to put F. Right. Actually, we don't even know where to put D and E because it could be no yeah. children for B and so, all children for C. Yeah. Yeah. So, what's the way to handle that next step? Right, because now C, C gets put over here. Hmm. What do we need to track to figure out where this goes? I guess you need to keep some information about what about, about the parents on the on the other side. I mean, on the yeah. But how do you do? Do that? you need the whole tree? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can't just pop it off. I don't know. So. That's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> I've got an idea. Here, here, it guys. might be crazy, though. It might be utterly nuts. It probably is. But I was talking before about how there is a sort of a natural way to navigate the tree using a... a, a Two different dimensions of motion, right? Up